Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about the classic. Sloppy Joe's. We're gonna put it all on the griddle. We're gonna kick the flavor up just a notch. You guys watch this. I, I think we're kicking the flavor up more than just one notch. Ironically, when I asked, I told four different people today I'm making Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> Every single one of them said, what are you gonna do different? I'm like, I just want a good Sloppy Joe. And I'm like, I wonder if that's what people expect. I don't mind it. I gotta be honest, this is maybe the first time in my life ever I'm actually looking forward to Sloppy Joe. All right, we've been rolling for almost an hour. I got my smoke tube going. Let me show you how we did this. All right, no muss, no fuss. This is basically just two pounds of ground beef. I've just roughly patted out into uh, portions. I've thinned it out a little bit because I want more surface area for the smoke. I got my pellet smoker about as low as it go, 225, and I have my smoke tube rolling. I'm not really worried about temp because remember, this is going to be ground beef, okay? We did something very similar to this when we did our chili cheese burger. We smoked a chuck roast. This is just something a little bit different. All right. So what I did, I smoked them for about 40 minutes. I didn't want it in here that much flavor, but I definitely want the combination of that smoke and the char. So 40 minutes, and then I'll just turn off this pellet smoker uh, completely, and we let that smoke tube roll as well to get some more flavor. Right now, we're putting everything on the Blackstone today, and it is heating up. I got a sear zone going on, on right here. These are on low. Actually, these two are off. These two are on high. I'm trying to get as much cheese as I can. I do want a low part of the griddle, okay? This sauce can get away from you in a hurry. Uh, typically, a great sloppy joe is done low and slow and it tenderizes the beef, so we're gonna kind of mimic that today. Uh, one other thing that came to mind is just the way I like it, okay? A um, little sauce, a little saucy sauce. Got some horseradish, some mayo, add a little Cholua, a little A1 to go on the bottom of the bun. We like ours with pickles. Trying to keep the actual inside traditional, we got bell pepper, onion, I'll throw in a little jalapeno. And the kicker of the whole thing, I'm telling you, if you guys haven't seen these in your local grocery stores, check them out. Um, they've come out with these brand new, and we love them. We love our brioche buns, and these are fantastic. Ready? All right, about a quarter cup of mayonnaise, teaspoon of horseradish, just a couple of dashes of hot sauce for color. Change that heat uh, flavor profile. The horseradish is going to hit you differently. And since the... Um, Sloppy Joe's traditionally have that sweetness. I thought the A1 would be good in there. So this is gonna be our sauce to go on the bottom of the Sloppy Joe or top, doesn't matter. Spicy? I love it. I love horseradish little sauces like that. All right, we have some prep work to do really quick. So I'm gonna chop an onion, a bell pepper, and a jalapeno. All right, our griddle should be heated up nicely. So the idea now, after we smoked it, is an intense style sear, okay? Since the beef is gonna be cooked all the way through, I'm not necessarily worried about overcooking the beef. Now you can dry out beef, but that's not the point of this video. The point is, is to kick up the flavor of traditional Sloppy Joe. Typically, if you think about it, you put it in a saucepan, a little um, skillet or something like that, you just brown off the beef throw the fat away and then add your sauce. That's not what we're trying to do. While our burgers are going, just to reiterate, this, this side of the grill is off completely. You guys can find this recipe at theflattalkking.com. We're working on it right now. We're just gonna start sweating the um, bell peppers, jalapeno, and the onion. All that is leftover heat from the other side of the griddle. All right, just to show you the color that we're looking for. That right there. That is flavor, flavor, flavor. 
Just kind of like the idea of a chopped cheese, right? You put it on the griddle, you wait for that crust to build, and it just adds flavor. Mm. So we give this about five minutes and we start chopping it up. Now that we flipped them, we're just going to start chopping. Since your ground beef, I am going to warn you, since your ground beef is already starting the cooking process, it's going to be a different philosophy than just spreading your ground beef and smashing it and all that, okay? Woo, this smells good. It's almost like the idea of pulled pork. You know, you don't get that bark in every flavor, but when you get that mixed in and incorporated, nice, nice. All right, we're gonna turn that grill down, probably to low. So we're gonna keep this one a little bit under high. This is gonna be our main heat factor, okay? I just think without making this before, I think it's very crucial to have your sauce work in your advantage. You don't want this over high heat because you don't want your sauce to reduce too fast. You wanna be able to control your sauce. It's like the idea of making hibachi or teriyaki, okay? Very important. Although it's sloppy, At this stage, I'm looking to cook the onions and the peppers in with the ground beef until they're they're broken down. I don't want chunks, I don't want bites or anything like that. I want it to be all part of the process. All right, you see how much my vegetables have cooked down? I just made a little well. That grease is kind of like catching right there. I'm at about a tablespoon, woo! About a <laughs> tablespoon of garlic was the idea. A couple pinches of salt, fresh cracked pepper. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Three tablespoons of mustard. Half cup ketchup. One tablespoon of vinegar. Just see if we can rinse some of that stuff out. Four tablespoons of brown sugar. And two tablespoons of tomato paste. All right, before I move it over to the cool side of the griddle, I'm just gonna add a good squirt of water. That's gonna help your tomato paste. Notice how I'm just kinda of like working it over. We want this to be able to reduce, but we want everything to come together nicely. A little hot on this side, bring it back over. How much water would you say total that was? Combined, both of them? Yeah. Probably half a cup. That's probably a good consistency right there. Now we're gonna start working, tasting, and bringing it back to the heat as our griddle warms back up. Remember, this side's off. This is our play zone. This is where we can catch our breath, make sure everything's right. If our whole griddle is on right now, the reason why I'm preaching this, it'd be hard for you to recover uh, without just keep adding and adding and adding, okay? We teach about zones and stuff like that. This is one of the times just like you would use it inside, you could always take your skillet off the stove, but when you have a griddle, it's hard to do that, right? So what we're gonna do, you'll see. Hear that sound? See that sauce that we're making? That's what we want. We want that to be able to reduce and soften that ground beef up. All right, see how our ground beef sticking together? It's going to thicken as it cools, okay? So I'm not a big fan of like gooey style sloppy joe, so I like mine to reduce. Got the meat rested, got our buns toasted. Come back in a little bit of that sauce. Remember this sauce is kind of like a, a counterbalance towards that sweetness of the sloppy joe. This is a little bit spicy. ultimate test how sloppy can sloppy be mm. and i think it's crucial i'm not a cheese fan on my sloppy joe if you are married to you but i think the pickle helps with the tartness 
You got the heat on the bottom with that sauce. All right, there's my version of Sloppy Joe. I've done everything I think I can to uh, step up the game. Um, I've been chowing down this meat on the back end. <laughs> let, me can, try, let me try the meat. As you can see that there's a lot of, uh, you know, like little tidbits here and there. We're able to get that char, I think helped. You guys see how much we stewed the vegetables down to make it part of it? I think that helps. You can always oh. mm. add water to your vegetables mm. inside the ground beef before you start adding that sauce. It'll help that stewing process. And I do think the smoke helped. Do you have to do it? Absolutely not. But the whole goal was to change the idea of a sloppy joe and make it better. We did. It's good. Yeah, this ain't no canned stuff. Mm. How's the sauce with it? Mm, there it is. You get the pickle more than the sauce. The sauce gives you that RB style horsey, that horse riders, that cream. But the pickle really balances out. The pickle really shoots through. Oh, I thought I was getting a bite. Mmm. 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 It was sloppy. All right, there you go. There's our version. Uh, don't forget to check out theflattopking.com. We'll have this recipe. If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on the Griddle Group on Facebook, where we talk about griddles. Ironically, sloppy joes come up a lot, so this is my rendition. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Mm, that's good, baby.